The first epistle of Paul to Timothy, usually referred to simply as 1 Timothy and often written 1 Timothy, is one of three letters in the New Testament of the Bible often grouped together as the pastoral epistles, along with 2 Timothy and Titus. The letter, traditionally attributed to the Apostle Paul, consists mainly of counsels to his younger colleague and delegate Timothy regarding his ministry in Ephesus 1 these councils include instructions on the organization of the church and the responsibilities resting on certain groups of leaders therein as well as exhortations to faithfulness in maintaining the truth amid surrounding errors. Composition The author of 1 Timothy has been traditionally identified as the Apostle Paul. He is named as the author of the letter in the text 1 -to -1. 19th and 20th century scholarship questioned the authenticity of the letter, with many scholars suggesting that 1 Timothy, along with 2 Timothy and Titus, are not original to Paul, but rather to an unknown Christian writing some time in the late 1st to mid-2nd century. Most scholars now affirm this view. However, some are calling this supposed consensus into question. As evidence for this perspective, they put forward that the pastoral epistles contain 306 words that Paul does not use in his unquestioned letters, that their style of writing is different from that of his unquestioned letters, that they reflect conditions and a church organization not current in Paul's day, and that they do not appear in early lists of his canonical works. Historical views the authenticity of Pauline authorship was accepted by Church Orthodoxy as early as c. AD 180, as evidenced by the surviving testimony of Irenaeus and the author of the Muratorian. Possible allusions are found in the letters from Clement of Rome to the Corinthians c. 95, Ignatius of Antioch to the Ephesians c. 110, and Polycarp to the Philippians c. 130, though it is difficult to determine the nature of any such literary relationships. Modern scholars who support Pauline authorship nevertheless stress their importance regarding the question of authenticity. I. H. Marshall and P. H. Towner wrote that, The key witness is Polycarp, where there is a high probability that 1 and 2 Tim were known to him. Similarly, M. W. Holmes argued that it is, virtually certain or highly probable, that Polycarp used 1 and 2 Timothy. Late in the 2nd century, there are a number of quotations from all three pastoral epistles in Irenaeus. Work against heresies. The Muratorian Canon c. lists the books of the NT and ascribes all three pastoral epistles to Paul. Eusebius c. calls it, along with the other thirteen canonical Pauline epistles, undisputed. Exceptions to this positive witness include Tatian, a disciple of Justin Martyr turned heretic, as well as the Gnostic Basilides. Marcion, an Orthodox bishop later excommunicated for heresy, formed an early canon of Scripture c. 140 around the Gospel of Luke and ten of the canonical Pauline epistles, excluding 1–2 Timothy and Titus. The reasons for these exclusions are unknown, and so speculation abounds, including the hypotheses that they were not written until after Marcion's time, or that he knew of them, but regarded them as inauthentic. Proponents of Pauline authorship argue that he had theological grounds for rejecting the pastorals, namely their teaching about the goodness of creation cf. 1 Tim 4 to 1 ff. The question remains whether Marcion knew these three letters and rejected them as Tertullian says, since in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20, "...false opposing arguments," are referred to, with the word for "...opposing arguments," being "...antithesis," the name of Marcion work, and so a subtle hint of Marcion's heresy. However, the structure of the Church presupposed is less developed than the one Ignatius presupposes who wrote c. 110, as well as the fact that not only is «antithesis» itself a Greek word which simply means «opposing arguments», but as it has been noted, the attack on the heretics is not central to the three letters. Date. The dating of 1 Timothy depends very much on the question of authorship. Those who accept the epistle's authenticity believe it was written soon after Paul left Ephesus, which he did twice according to the Acts of the Apostles. 
This dates the epistle to either about the year 58 or 59, or about the year 64 or 65 AD. Those who have maintained the former opinion, among others, are Theodoret, Benson, Zacharie, Michaelis, Schmidt. Kopp, Planck, Grotius Lightfoot, Witsius, Lardner, Hug, and Professor. Stewart. The latter opinion, that it was written after Paul's first imprisonment at Rome, is maintained by Paley, Pearson, L. Enfant, Leclerc, Cave, Mill, Whitby, McKnight, and others. Secular historians generally place its composition sometime in the late 1st century or first half of the 2nd century AD, with a wide margin of uncertainty. The text seems to be contending against nascent Gnosticism 1 Tim 1 -4, 1 Tim 4 -3 Siencratism, which would suggest a later date due to Gnosticism developing primarily in the latter 1st century. The term Gnosis knowledge itself occurs in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20. If the parallels between 1 Timothy and Polycarp S epistle are understood as a literary dependence by the latter on the former, as is generally accepted, this would constitute a terminus anti-Quem of AD 130–155. However, Irenaeus writing c. AD 180 is the earliest author to clearly and unequivocally describe the pastorals. The earliest known writing of 1 Timothy has been found on Oxyrhynchus Papyrus 5259, designated p. Display style math frac p 133 in 2017. It comes from a leaf of a codex which is dated to the third century. Topic. Background. Topic. This historical relationship between Paul and Timothy is one of mentorship. Timothy is first mentioned in Acts chapter 16 verse 1. His mother Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, are mentioned in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. All that we know of his father is that he was a Greek, not a Jew Acts 16 verse 1. Paul's second visit to Lystra is when Timothy first connected with Paul 1 Timothy 1 verse 2, 2 Timothy 3 verse 11. Paul not only brought Timothy into the faith but he was Timothy's main mentor in Christian leadership Acts 16 verse 3, having done church planting and missionary journeys together. Timothy would have received his authority to preach in churches directly from Paul who of course was the greater known and accepted of the two and an apostle. Timothy's official position in the church was one of an evangelist 1 Timothy 4 verse 14 and he worked with Paul in Phrygia, Galatia, and Mysia, Troa, Philippi and Berea Acts 17 verse 14 and continued on to do even more work in Athens, and Thessalonica for the church Acts 17 verse 15, 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 2 not to mention his work in Corinth, Macedonia, Ephesus and Greater Asia. Timothy was also noted for coming to Paul's aid when Paul fell into prison Philippians 1 verses 1, 2 Timothy 4 It is noteworthy that, despite not being required to the ruling of the Jerusalem council, Timothy took circumcision himself in order to be a better witness among the Jews. According to church tradition he was loyal to Paul's wishes and stayed and worked in Ephesus until he finally suffered a martyr's death himself, if, however, the pastorals are best understood against the background of the second century. The evidence in the letters relative to church order clearly reflect a time when apostle and prophet have been succeeded by bishop and archbishop and or elder in a stabilized church organization fully committed to an authorized succession of ordained ministers. The local churches are no longer lay churches, nor are their needs now taken care of simply by itinerant missionaries. There is obviously hierarchical organization both in the local and ecumenical church. The chief function of the bishop or archbishop is to transmit and maintain the true faith. The pastorals are distinguished from all other New Testament letters in that they are addressed to a special functional class within the church, namely the professional ministry. Thus these letters occupy the unique distinction of being not simply the only letters in the New Testament to be addressed primarily to clergymen, but also of being in this sense the first extant pastoral letters—that is, letters written by a pastor to pastors—in the history of the Church. <laughs> Key themes 
The author of this epistle writes to Timothy concerning the organization of the Church and Timothy's own leadership within the body. Major themes include the use of the law 1 Timothy 1 -7 warnings against false doctrine such as encratism, instructions for prayer 1 Timothy 2 -1 roles of women in the church, qualifications for leaders of the church 1 Timothy 3 -1 and the treatment of widows, elders, masters, youth, and church members in general 1 Timothy 5 verse 1-5–20. The structure for the role of women in the church at Ephesus is laid out as well as a detailed list of qualifications for who can and cannot serve as elders and deacons in the church. Some feel he clearly teaches that women are not to have authority over men in the church structure 1 Timothy 2 verse 12, see a similar earlier statement in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 35 and that this is why he clearly excludes them from the roles of elder, bishop and deacon in chapter 3. People who hold to this stance point out that Paul use of the phrase husband of one wife is gender specific and excludes women from that role they would point out that in the greek text it literally reads man of one woman mia's gynaikos andra 1 timothy chapter 3 verse 2 however other scholars argue that this is a product of the time in which paul lived and it is a cultural reference not meant to be eternally binding on the church the treatment of this issue has also been pointed to as evidence that 1 Timothy is not Pauline, noting the freedom granted women in the apostolic age to exercise the gifts of the Spirit, and Paul's insistence that in Christ there is neither male nor female, which had brought them into quick and widespread public activity. The New Jerome Bible Commentary points out that the reasoning in 1 Timothy the fall was Eve's fault is non-Pauline. Paul himself prefers to assign blame to Adam as a counterpart to Christ. See Rom Romans 5:12-21, I Cor Corinthians 15:45-49. In fact, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 states, not that Eve disobeyed, but that she was tricked, holding true to Paul's assertion that Adam alone was the transgressor. Topic: Outline Topic. Topic. See also. Topic. First Timothy chapter two verse twelve. I suffer not a woman. Textual variants in the first epistle to Timothy. Second epistle to Timothy. An historical account of two notable corruptions of Scripture. Topic. Notes Topic Topic External Links Topic First Timothy Texts and Resources First Timothy Public Domain Audiobook at Librivox Various Versions <laughs>